Hi viewers, <coughs> welcome to new video. In this video, in this video, we are going to see what is internal block diagram of SCP. So, in connection with the last uh, class or uh, in connection with the last video, so here we are going to learn about what is RAM and what is ROM. RAM versus ROM, we will discuss. And then we will also discuss about primary memory and secondary memories. Then we will discuss about this registers. Uh, what are the register set which are available in this internal block diagram of CPU? Then we will discuss ALU, PC, that is program counter, uh, and also we will discuss about uh, instruction register, instruction deco registers, timing and control circuit. So this is what is the agenda of this. Uh, particular uh, video or this particular session. So first let us start with RAM and ROM. RAM we already know it is random access memory. ROM is read only memory. So what is the use of these two RAM and ROM? Okay, And what do you mean by primary memory and what do you mean by secondary memory? So we, uh, we have seen in the last session uh, your CPU is connected with RAM, ROM, disk. Okay, so disk memories are said to be secondary memories. This RAM and ROM are said to be primary memories. So whatever the information CPU want to execute or whatever the information CPU want to use, it will be it should be available in primary memories first, so that it can access quickly. If it is not available in primary memories then it will go to the secondary memories that is directly it will go to the disk memory and from the disk memory it will copy that information into the primary memories like RAM and ROM. Usually out of these uh, two primary memories RAM and ROM, RAM is a volatile memory it is random access memory. So even though RAM uh, decides the speed of operation, once, when once the power goes off, uh, this RAM memory is lost. ROM is a read-only memory, it is a permanent memory. Whatever the information that is stored in the ROM memory, it will last long. Even though there is a power failure, nothing will happen. So that is about the first two points, <coughs> RAM versus ROM. Now coming to the internal block diagram of any CPU, whether it is 8051 or whether it is 8086 or any latest microprocessor in the market. So out of uh, all, all the CPUs which are available, I am summarizing a general, a generalized CPU. What, what does the internal block diagram of a particular CPU consists of? So it is, uh, I mean, uh, one main part called ALU. Here also you can see there are buses. This is internal data bus and these three are the buses. Address bus, control bus and data bus. So in this internal block diagram of CPU, this ALU plays a key role. So all the process, all the processings or all the operations which a CPU will perform will be done by or will be handled by this ALU. ALU capacity will decide the size of the processor. Size in the sense like 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit. The processing capability of that particular processor will be decided by the ALU, arithmetic and logical unit. It will perform arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and or uh, exclusive or not operations related to logical. So it will perform both arithmetic and logical operations and you can see here there is one block connected to the ALU which is called flags these flags will maintain the status of ALU operation what is happening during ALU operation such status uh, can be uh, available it can be captured in this flag register okay and how this ALU is going to get the information I will tell you uh, after explaining this side also. So here you can see there is a program counter. We already know that what is the use of the program counter is program counter will always point to the address of next instruction. Okay, so it is pointing to the address of 
next instruction. So that's why it is connected to the address bus. So it, it will just give the information to the address bus that what is the next address it has to read or it has to write to. So that is the uh, job of program counter. It will point to the address of next instruction. In certain CPUs, uh, we can uh, say that there is instruction pointer. Instead of program counter, we have an instruction pointer. The name instruction pointer and program counter both are same. Instruction pointer, it is pointing to the address of next instruction. Then we have instruction register. Whatever the address, your address bus will uh, hold, from that particular address, data will come and sit into the instruction registers. Okay? IR is such a register. And whatever the instruction that we have written, it is a human understandable, uh, it is in a human understandable language. So it has to be converted into a machine understandable uh, file. So that can be done by instruction decoder with the help of timing and control circuitry. So this, this particular block is connected to control bus. So the control bus will decide whether we have to read or whether we have to write from I.O. devices or memory devices based on the timing and control uh, signals, the instructions will be decoded from IR register. And also you can see there is a data bus. Once these two, the job of these two buses are done, data bus purposes, it will just bring the data from that location into the CPU, it will go into the ADU. Okay. So for example, I want to add two numbers. So two numbers address will be given by address bus, then we will be uh, getting the information. I have to read the data from that particular location. Then data bus will go and bring the data and give it to the ADU. That's why you can see there are two lines connected to ADU. And after performing the addition or subtraction, whatever it is, the result is again given back to the data bus. And from the data bus, it is sent outside. Okay. So this is internal data bus. And these are the buses which are connected to the external world. So processor, the CPU can interact with the external world with the help of these three buses. Now coming to the registers. So in any processor, the register set is available. The purpose of the register set is, the, it will be maintaining a temporary storage. Whatever the information that I want to bring from the primary memories or secondary memories, they will be stored into the registers. Okay, so these registers uh, could be of uh, either 8 bit, 6, uh, 16 bit, 32 bit or 64 bit depending upon the type of the processor. Okay, and the size of the registers uh, will also increase the complexity of such processor. So depending upon the type of the processor, then uh, they will be using the respective register set. Okay, so 8051 will be having 8 bit register set and 8086 microprocessor will be having 16 bit register set. So depending upon its ADU capacity or uh, depending upon the uh, uh, algorithms they want to process, they will be maintaining, CP will be maintaining such register set. So that is about the register set. So this diagram will give us a clear picture of any CPU. What does a CPU uh, will have in, inside that CPU? You can find ALU, flag registers, program counters, instruction registers, instruction deco registers, timing and control signals, and then register set. Okay. To summarize, I told you that there is an internal bus here, which will, which will be helping the CPU to get the data from primary and secondary memories with the help of this register set, program counter, and instruction deco registers. Then it will be given to the ALU. ALU will be performing arithmetic and logical operations. So that is about the internal block diagram of SCPU. So hope uh, you like this video. So if you like this video, uh, please do subscribe to my channel and then forward this to the relevant audience for whom this uh, topic is, is there in their syllabus. So thank you very much.